And welcome to the Men Break 2 podcast. I have Paul Newell on today. Hello. Holding his book right here, Heal Thy Man Method. Um, this podcast is going to be about self-awareness. I'm telling you men right now, you may think you're self-aware. I guarantee to you, you are not. I thought I was. <laughs> I absolutely thought I was, and I look back on my marriage, my divorce, and a lot of things that I do in my life, and I wish I had more self-awareness. Um, I got to tell you, Paul, we were talking before we actually started recording here. The book is great. The book is excellent. You know, I, I read a lot of books that are very technical and very step one, step two, step three, and like I was telling you, I love the book because when I'm reading it, it feels like I'm standing in front of you and you're telling me a story. Uh, and it, it really hits home. So, um, thank you. You want to take a few minutes, an hour, however long you want. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Why? I mean, I already know why, but, uh, the listeners want to know why, what brought you into this? Why did you write this? Tell us your story. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, man. Like, uh, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm, I, we just had a little pregame. I'm digging you already. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm fresh. Don't tell uh, so, anybody, man. You're going to ruin my reputation, man. Uh, yeah, no, I'll forget. We, we'll edit that. We'll edit it. I'm we'll looking edit. for all the hater comments. So, you know, all the, all the haters <laughs> posting comments right now. Just to let you know, Paul says I'm an okay guy. So, <laughs> he's a good dude. Top notch, top notch. Uh, so, my name is Paul Newell. I am a men's health and well being consultant. What does that mean? Um, so, basically, I work with men, I uh, facilitate men's circles, and I support men in finding their way in life, um, whether that's in relationships, um, in communication. Uh, finance, I stay away from, it's more about patterns. Uh, and I teach men about what their version of self awareness means. I've been a yoga teacher for 12 years. Um, I'm a Reiki master. Um, so basically it means I can play around with energy. Not really like, like Dr. Strange, uh, although I'm working towards that level. And, um, and, and my thing is, is uh, I work with uh, men specifically. I work a lot with men of color. I have, uh, I'm a co-founder and, and program facilitator for an organization called the Brotherhood of Kings, which is for men of color um, to gather. Uh, we meet weekly. We, uh, we also have a book coming out as well um, on March 1st. And uh, my biggest thing is I want to support men in finding a way that they manage their life. Um, the reason being is because, you know, very similar to Mike, I've been married. I went through divorce. I have, I have a, I have a son with my former wife. Um, I uh, use, uh, when I was going through a lot of pain in my life, I used a lot of drugs and sex. So that it, it resulted in me having two other children with two different women. Um, so I've uh, experienced a lot of shame in my life. I've experienced a lot of anger with the situation of being alienated from my kids and, um, just like a lot of stuff that I went through. And I wrote the book because like, it was my way to heal myself in a way to have something for like, you know, real talk, Mike, like I, I just, I didn't know if I, if in the case that I don't have a relationship with my sons or my, uh, my daughter, <clears throat> read the book. You'll know everything you need to know about me and yourself, <laughs> you know, because yeah, exactly. it's, you're me, you're me. So, exactly. um, so that's, and I also wanted it like, you know, uh, Mike, you gave me f great feedback before I wanted it to be, uh, something that like, if a man was going through some stuff, they could just open up the book and be a page or whatever they're reading. It's like, I'm talking to you, man. So, cause you know, I had times where I wanted to kill myself. And, um, something and something bigger kept me here. Um, and, uh, I know that pain. So I want to support men and in, in staying here, staying in the game, being alive, uh, because a lot of men take their lives and yeah, yeah that's, absolutely. that's me. I don't think people really understand how many men actually commit suicide. I had two people in my family actually commit suicide, a great grandfather oh, and a grandfather. So of course, anytime, anytime I go to see a therapist and they're like, so, um, Anyone in your family? Yeah, my grandpa. Oh, you're a poster child for suicide. I'm a man. I'm a poster child for suicide. You know, what right, I mean? bro. I, I'm, I'm not trying right. to say I'm not trying to say woe is me for being a man, but you know, we we do take on a lot of stuff internally. So you know, for every man who does unalive himself, there's uh, twice as many that are, I mean, a, a second away that are, are are dealing with this, and they're still. They're still here listening. So, um, you know, I want to say this is my favorite saying. If, if God woke you up today, <laughs> there's something you ain't accomplished yet. And it is an insult. It is an insult to him to not move forward with your life. 
There it is, man. You know, uh, there and it I'm, is. Glad, I'm glad you brought up. Uh, I want to last. I want to talk about the black community for for a second with mental yeah. health. Charlemagne the God. If y'all yeah. don't listen to Charlemagne right now, I think Charlemagne has been one of the biggest influencers about breaking the stereotype, the stigmatism of mental health in the black community. And I'm saying that I'm going to, I'm going to include the links that you were saying, but I, I want to include links to some of the stuff Charlemagne does because Please do, he yeah. is, uh, <clears throat> he's unbelievable and not just the black community. I mean, he's helping the, the stereotypes or the, the stigmatism in the, in the black community, but he is just great. And when he's talking about mental health, especially yeah. mental health for men and everything. So, yeah, and I think you know. Listen, it's funny because I was just talking about this in other. Uh, you laugh about them before, you know. In our culture, uh, and specific, specifically in, in the black culture, like and working with black men, I've I've found that I've had to package the mental health differently, right? And um, and why I say that is because for me, growing up anyway, like my model, what I caught Mike was for to deal with stress. Like when I see my dad, he had brandy. You know, like uh, my mom didn't drink at all, like, but like, you know, she was, she was depressed, but I saw my dad, like, and that was in me, right? Like my dad was an alcoholic. He loved his drinks, man. He could, he could hold his shit. And so could I, mm -hmm. but like, the thing is that in the black community, if even if you look at the structure of the black communities and the urban communities, most of them are free of having yoga studios and juice spots. What do you see? Like, you know, Kennedy's fried chicken, a liquor store, um, you know, something with some high processed foods that's usually going to process more depression and inflammation and poor health, yep. which in itself is going to be like, what, what do we do? Rather than being like, hey, we're going to go see a therapist. Man, we don't have money for that. Go down there and get yourself a Coke 45, man. Yep. That's a stereotypical. Go down there and get yourself a Heineken. Big Pick bears. me up some E&J Big too. bear is what we used to drink. What was it, Big Bear? Big Bear or Cobra, 99 cents. Oh, bro, man, <laughs> yes, yes, bro. Yeah, so. man. Listen, you go for the bargains. That's usually the most toxic shit. It gets yep. you banged up, though, right? Absolutely. And I think it's like a piece, and I appreciate what Charlemagne the guy is doing. I appreciate anyone, I appreciate anyone out here that's talking more about mental health, men's rights, and like helping and supporting men. Because listen, whether I agree with them or not, it doesn't matter. I'm applauding them. I'm a, I'm a ride with them, man. Like, yo, it's okay if we, if we're free of agreeing, it's okay. We yeah. all, but there's a lot of, like you said before, Mike. There's a lot of men out there that could use help and support, man. Perfect. So let's talk about mm -hmm. self awareness because I already sure. accused a, a bunch of my audience of not having it. So I'm sure there are. <laughs> yeah, you went in. You were like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have all you, like, you all you like think this motherfucker so we're yeah no okay so <laughs> so what is what is self-awareness to you because i i can i can tell you my story but tell me what self-awareness is to you so uh i look at self-awareness as i know my good i know my bad i know my gold i know my shit and i'm comfortable with it all comfortable that's with perfect. all of it that's perfect yeah you yeah. know, like I know, like uh, you know what, like when I'm stressed, I like Wendy's double stacks. <laughs> like when I when I need to get away, I'm going on a hike. <laughs> right, like when yeah. I need to think, you know, like I I just I think it's you know it's and it's one of these things I was gonna I was thinking about this lady before when you talk when we talk about toxic and and like you know and I think self awareness is another one of those things. Like in the article you said before, like it's a buzzword. And I think whenever there's a buzzword, people tend to get lazy because they go with whatever yes. the collective definition of self-awareness is. So when, I, when I'm when i teaching yoga and I talk about self-awareness, people are like, does it mean I have to meditate 10 minutes a day? No. Mm -hmm. Like, can you can you focus for a minute? Like I tell people like when I'm working with men, men like I can't focus, well, meditate. I was like, do me a favor. Do you have trees by your house? They're like, yeah, go outside. Put your timer on for a minute and just watch the top of a tree. They're like, what the hell does that do? Just just do it. They come back, they're like, that was some wild ass shit. Yeah. I actually felt calm. Exactly, bruv. <laughs> Yo. They're, they're not paying attention. You're they're, not paying they're, attention. They're caught up in the normal everyday routine, and this is how I'm supposed to act, and this is how I'm supposed to feel, and everything else, you know? Um, you know, self-awareness is very important. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know what your triggers are. You've got to know what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what yeah. makes you mad. Because 
you know, I hate to use the term high value man because that's another buzzword that's getting thrown around right now. But if you want to be a man that that has a high value, you know, that, that you're doing the best you can, you really need to know what motivates you and you need mm. to gravitate towards mm-hmm. that. You need to know mm-hmm. what is destructive to you and um, stay away from that type of stuff. Mm. And it's important to have self-awareness, I tell people, because I guarantee a lot of people listening right now, if you sit back and evaluate who you're hanging out with, your friends and even your family, they're not going to help you. I, during my divorce, I got rid of all my friends except one. I have one friend right now, and I fucking hate him because <laughs> this guy is the first one to call me out for my bullshit. Nobody yes, else will. Bless up to that dude. And I, I know, I mean, I hate him and I love him. He's like a double-edged sword, you know? It's like, yes. I love you, but fuck you. So, you know, he always tells me something. It makes me mad. And I'm like, my ego isn't getting out of control. This guy, I just can't. Well, you know what? Yeah, maybe he is right. And then, you know, uh, okay, yeah, I, okay, I get it. I need to reel myself back in. You know, right. because no matter how self-aware you are, you're always going to have those times when you go out. But, you know, so whatever you're going through, look at look at the people you're hanging out with. These are the people where oh. when I when I first told some of my friends, my, my former friends, I said, hey, I'm getting a divorce. You know what their response was, was, oh, man, it'll be okay. Let's just go get you laid. Let's go to the bar. Let's do this. And it's like, and, and at the time, I'm thinking that's what a friend does. You know, friends are supportive and all this. I didn't go out, get drunk and, and do all this other stuff. I mean, I did some wild shit, but that's a different podcast for a different time. <laughs> we'll um, get into that another time. But, you know, it's like. <laughs> I, even some of my, my extended family, I'm like, it's not their job to fix me, but yeah. I wish I would have had someone grab me by the shirt collar and say, you know what? You're fucking up. Yeah. You are fucking up here. You're fucking up your life. You're fucking up your family. You're fucking up your kids. You're fucking up yeah. your finances. You need to wake up. And as a man, I'm telling you, nobody's going to do that for you. I found out. Yeah, bro. You have to do that for yourself. You have to absolutely be aware of what your triggers are. Yeah. Um, Oh, like man. self-sabotage, uh, self-sabotage is something you cover in the book really well. Um, I don't know if you want to talk okay. about, you know, why it happens, how you can overcome it, things to keep in mind in order to stop doing it. Cause you can really be self-destructive to yourself. Fuck what the world does. You can bring it on you really quick. Re- really quick, man. Really quick. So yeah, I'll dive into it. Cause I think, I think it's important for men and everyone really to look at this piece. And this is one of the reasons I brought up about stories and patterns and, and like, like the healing my wounds and stuff, because I recognized I was unconsciously sabotaging my shit because that's where my vibe was. <clears throat> my vibe was all about chaos. Like that's what I grew up in. And the thing was, is that without me re- before I was able to really recognize that pattern, that was normal to me. So if I say, I could say, because I saw freaking some stuff on TV, like, oh, I want that in my life. Yeah. I want that kind of relationship. Okay, great. Like I could have it and I'll be like, I got to go cheat. <laughs> yo, I got I to gotta fuck this up somehow. I'm going to go create an argument. But then it's like, yo, it's her fault. What? Like, yo, man, you wanted that smoke. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, I think this is a, and, and the reason why this is important, right? At least for knowing self, because one of the things I'm very passionate about right now, and I have some programs out here, um, I'm, I have some programs out for youth development in in New Jersey, and I'm very passionate right now about educating young men about mate selection. And the first piece of mate selection is knowing who you are and what is your support system. What does a partner look like and do for you? Okay, because I think that this this piece for men to know that they're going to be free of self sabotaging. Because I could say, "Hey, you know what? I want a real nice car," but if I if I have yet to learn how to work with a freaking Honda, which Hondas are nice cars, but if I have yet to work with a Honda, right, and I treat that Honda like doo doo, then what makes me think that I would treat that Maserati any better? Right. But yet the thing is, though, Mike, is that we go into these situations with this preconceived notion of things that's based on some trauma and wounds, man. So we go into a situation thinking I'm going to speak for myself. I would go into a situation thinking I knew the situation, but looking back on it, I knew nothing. (laughs) Right. Like I thought I knew and I knew it from my wounds, Mike. Mm -hmm. I knew it from my wounds. 
So I was well, like, oh, I, man, I love how you talk about the relationships where like anytime a relationship was going good for you, you felt mm-hmm. like you needed to fuck it up. Yeah. I was like, yo, I got to find some chick to give me a blowjob. There yeah. you go. And, and I just think like, a lot of people like, are in know, that. What's that? A lot of people are in that situation because it's not yeah. normal to them. It's like, right. now I'm in a relationship. This woman's respecting me. She's lifting me up. She's doing everything. Something's got to be wrong here. Let me go get yeah. a side chick. Yeah. And you know, what's wild, right? Is like, I, when I dove into that and it, and like, you know, I'm, I'm using, I'm using the side chick as an example and it could be anything, right? It could be like, yo, I'm going to go out golfing more. I'm going to go out. I'm like, Oh, she doesn't, she doesn't like me going on a hike. Guess where I'm going. I'm going on a hike. Hike like that bitch. Like what? Mm-hmm. You just yep. sabotage your shit. The thing is though, is that like, you know, um, I found when I was really looking at that, there was a resentment there. Right. And I was resenting it because I was giving this person everything and I wasn't giving myself shit. So this is one of the reasons I encourage men to really tap into yourself. Right. Like know what you want, because I think in in our culture, too. Right. Which is like a double edged sword. It's like there's this there's there's this culture where um, like I'm 47. So there's a culture was like, yo, you got to be a pickup artist. Right. Like I'm yeah, going exactly. to, I'm going to, oh, yo, listen, especially my, my, my origins from the Caribbean. My parents are Jamaican. Right. So it's like, yo, you have to body the gal them, you know, like, and I talked about that in like weapon becomes a wand. Right. Yep. It's like our, our communication is that of like violence. Right. And like, yo, we got to get chick to, chicks to be validated. And it's like an undercurrent in our society. Like, yo, what's, oh, you got a bad bit. Oh, you got, well, she look good. Now all of a sudden this dude's riding high rather than, but if this dude's like, yeah, you know, I got seven properties. And then like, I also got this They're like, man, you a square man, get your ass out of here. I'm like what? Like, no. And I think this is the piece where like, when, when it's talking about sabotage, self-sabotage, especially when, when I'm failing to acknowledge or deal with my stuff, I'm going to sabotage myself. Now I, we're talking now, Mike, we're talking about relationships, but like with this book, I'm talking about, I've done this in my career. Like, you know, when I, when I was making six figures, when I was going through my divorce, I was like, yo man, you know what? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm, I wasn't paying attention. I took it for granted. That in itself is self sabotage And guess what? I was fired. <laughs> you know what yep. I mean? Oh shit. What happened? I sabotaged it because like, I didn't know what it was like to be successful. I was like, I gotta, I gotta fuck this up. I'm scared of success. I don't want a success. I'm gonna change. But well, all these stories, like man, I, I, like you, I'll, I'll, my, my therapist is just like, oh yeah, oh, oh. I remember we talking about that one. Yep, you know? exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh god, that was a hell of a session. Well, so yeah, it yeah. was. I, I'll prove, I'll prove my point about self awareness right now for for those mm-hmm. of you listening. Tell me that you didn't see during the last few years of your marriage. Tell me that you did not see that there was a problem. Yes. Because you saw it. Yep. Yes. You knew I did. it. Yep. But you didn't become aware of it. You didn't you didn't take that self awareness in and say, hmm, something is going wrong here. What do I yep. need to do in order to fix this? You didn't you didn't find it out until after the divorce when you got red pilled. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bro, which, oh, so I got to, oh, I got to yeah, share this. And, right? and, and real quick, we just talked about the yeah. red pill content earlier for, for yeah. those aren't aware. I, I'm not against red pill content. I, I think some of the red pill content is good. W- where I'm at is you really need self-awareness if you're going to listen to red pill content, because yeah. one of two things is going to happen to you when you get red pilled. If you have self-awareness, you're going to be able to take that content and say, okay, I agree with this. I disagree with that, but you're going to be able to use that to better yourself. If you are yeah. self-aware and you get red pilled, you're going to turn into a bitter son of a bitch. Yeah, you're going to turn time. angry and and everything else. So so I'm not I'm not dissing red pill content. I, I'm probably the first to to flip through it on Facebook and and TikTok and everything else. I'm just saying, uh, man, if you're listening to this, you you need to make sure you have self awareness when it comes about. So uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. There. And, and Mike, I want to pause for a second because you bring up a really good point, man. Um, because like, listen, we're talking about self-awareness and I, I would like, I want to take this opportunity to really dive into what that means in this particular situation with the red pill content. <clears throat> now, what, what, what I mean by this is like to be self-aware, if you're like, I don't know what that means. I'm still going to listen to red pill content. Great. I'd like you to take, I invite you to do these things. When you're listening to the red pill content, 
what is vibing high in you? Like, what's really, what are you feeling, right? Like, is it like you're feeling a pain in your chest? Like, are you feel tingling? I, whenever I get really pissed, I feel tingling in my fingertips. Like, and then when you start to really just sense, and I say, rather than feel, what do you sense? Do you sense like you want to punch somebody in the face? Do you sense like you want to cry, but you can't? Whatever it is, like it's free of judgment. You can write it down. Now, once you've observed that, now you look at like, what did that person say to bring me to that? Now that's a trail. That's, that's your lining right there. That's, that's your thread to a part of your self-awareness. Okay. A part of it. Because the thing is, is again, when we're just unconsciously and Earl Nightingale talks about this all the time, men's greatest ability is to think, <laughs> to think. But when we're, I'm gonna speak for myself. When I was in that space, Mike, I was so fucking pissed that like, you know what? That's why I said, if I listened to that content, I would have done some crazy shit because mm -hmm. like I needed to step away. I needed to be away from my friends that were like, yo, man, let's just go get you some, let's just go get you laid. Let's go have a drink. And be inside and like really deal with that stuff that I was experiencing. Cause really I had no choice though, Mike. Like I, I had no money. Like I was paying for an apartment, lawyer, half my mortgage. I was like, yo, there's a couple of times I was going to work. I ran out of gas, bro. <laughs> like, so like, I know the feeling and what men, like, I don't know everything, but I can relate to some really dark times after that space. And the red pill can be a very, alluring space to fester wounds or heal them. It's exactly. a matter of the person, right? And there's a great con there's a lot of great content in there. I think a lot of content is great because I can hear some different perspectives and learn. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I and if I wanted to, I could be like, I could take that. I could just, I'm gonna go with this. You know, it's it's all a matter of like, again, that's where the self-awareness comes in. Great. How do I want to use that? And that's the power of us learning to master our mojo. Right. Yeah. Because that's all a part of, a, of who we are, man. Fester or learn. I love it. And, and that, you know, that's why I said I don't have a problem with red pill content. I think it's great. I, I wish I would have been red pilled during my marriage because yeah. I probably could have saved it. You know what I mean? But I, I just didn't listen to it. So now I'm like, OK, yeah, I think this content is great to wake people up. But once you get that now, it's it comes down to your emotional intelligence. I don't think, you know, a lot of people out there right now are like, oh, Andrew Tate, he's dangerous and don't listen to him. Here, here's the thing about that. You know, it doesn't matter what somebody says. It matters how you react to it. And, mm -hmm. and, and I believe that with everything in life. So if you have the emotional intelligence to listen to things that are said on the red pill type content and say, OK, this speaks to me because of like what you said, it takes me down this trauma trail. It takes me back to shame. It takes me back to my anger, my ego, whatever it takes you to, you know, what parts of you as a man you need to fix to be a better man. And that's what sure. red pill yep. content's trying to do for you. But right. a lot of people that don't have that emotional intelligence aren't self-aware that maybe they have a big ego problem or they have an anger problem that they don't know how to control, or they have stress, anxiety, they can go right to that dark place. So it, it I guess it's a double-edged sword. I still watch it. it. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong and, because and, I can handle it, but right. Well, and also too though, Mike, you bring up a great point. Um, you know, I, I've I've learned especially because I've I'm I'm like really just getting familiar with Andrew Tate, Kevin Samuels, like a lot of these cats, like and and, Love and Kevin Samuels. The shorts, like I've <laughs> you know I've I've taken time to really hear their content and like listen because like I don't know I'm a very skeptical person. Right. Um, I used, I think it's cause like when I started working in PR, I recognized that media can put out whatever they want to. And I bring that up because like, I know Andrew Tate's taken a lot of heat with, um, you know, with, with teenagers and things like this. And I just want people to be aware. It's like, you know, media people, people will put his content out for one or two things, you know, to create, um, like hatred or to get themselves popular, <laughs> you know? So like, People are going to put out the most vile or the most sh oh, shocking thing to really like, because our attention span is probably like, you know, what, seven seconds, you know, like, if oh, they got to do some, oh, oh, well, I'm going to watch this reel. It's Andrew Tate saying like he hates women or something like that. Whereas really that part that he said was probably a reflection of something else in the conversation. They're going to so, pick the side that they want to support. Right. And they're going to find the confirmation bias to support right. them. So right. you love red pill content or you hate red pill content, I could go online right now and find plenty to support one way or another. 
You, right. you know what I mean? And, and I could convince people to watch it. I could convince people not to watch it. You know, the whole thing about it is make up your own mind. You know, right. Don't let, don't let anyone else influence you. So. And, and listen, and that takes courage and willingness, right? No, f- few people ever talk about that, Mike. Few people ever talk about what it really takes to change. You know, you could, people could put up a bunch of memes till freaking the cows come home. It doesn't mean shit. It's like, yo, w- w- like, it's, it's like, there's, there's a willingness and I got to be courageous to step into something against what I know. And I got to be willing to be there. Like I can have the courage and I got to, I got to have courage. Like, yo, I got the courage to do it. And I got to be willing to take that first step. Right. So like, there's a piece where, you know, I, I see like the, the thing I see in all that content. And one of the things like I wanted to make sure was, was, you know, when I like my energy when I was writing this was like I want men to teach themselves that no one is going to save you but you. Exactly. If you're seeing Andrew Tate or you're seeing whoever's out there's newest, please best believe they're a they're a part of you that you have yet to tap into. That's why you're attracted to that person. Hundred percent. You see what I'm saying? 100%. That's why you're attracted to guns because they have something in them that you have yet to activate. You're, you that part of you is like, I want that. Okay, well, activate it. Exactly. And when men can start to recognize and understand this, then I think things will change, and the way that we get treated in our society will get changed. Yeah. Um... One thing too, and I know we're talking about red pill content, you know, I want to bring up the, the incels, which, you know, mm-hmm. I, I kind of talked to you a little bit offline. Um, for those who aren't aware, an incel is somebody who is uh, involuntary, non-sexual. They just basically can't attract mm-hmm. women, don't want to, it's, it's a buzzword, which is basically an insult to a man who can't get a woman. Mm. And self-awareness, I think, is the one thing missing from an incel being a very dangerous man. And here's what I mean. I can go to the Mm. supermarket right now in my area, and I can Mm. see a man who is probably divorced. The dude is six foot four, perfect hair, blue eyes, just like fucking gorgeous if I were to rate a man. Mm -hmm. Probably has money living in a nice neighborhood, driving a nice car, but he's yeah. overweight. Mm. And, and he's probably like, eh, I can't get a woman. I can't attract a woman. And I'm looking to myself going, if you give me this guy for two months in the gym, oh. Oh. I, I'm out of the market. I'm out of the market. Dude, six, four, he's got money. He's handsome. He thinks his dad bod's attractive. You know, he just needs to lose a little weight, get in shape. This dude has taken any woman that I'm, that I ever have a chance with. You know what I mean? So that self-awareness is is very important. And I think a lot of guys don't want to hear that stuff too, where they're like, oh man, you you need to, you need to go see a therapist. No, I don't. Fuck a therapist. I don't need therapy. Well, you know what? If you got a little bit more emotional, intelligent, you would be able to be able to talk to somebody better and attract somebody. Uh, Me personally, I'm scared to death. You know, when we talk about the people who will self-identify as incels, and I don't mean it like a, a negative term as people are throwing it around. I'm talking about these guys who basically given up. I'm giving up on women because I can't get them for whatever reason. And I'm like, this dude could be so fucking dangerous. Yeah, you bro. know what I mean? So yeah. dangerous. Come work out with me, brother. Just come, come lift, yeah. come lift a little weights. Cut out the sugars and carbs. Let's let's do this, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll yes, hang out I with do. you. I'll take the women that you don't pick up. I'll take the scraps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you don't want to? Hey, yeah. little girl, come over here, girl. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Girl. Six foot four alone for me. That's like, girl. dude, and you listen, just, you know. And here's the thing, right? Like, I, and I was listening. I, I, um, I was listening to this woman, Pearly Things. Right? I did. Oh, I did she's her she's such too. an up and comer, isn't she? Dude, I love her. I, dig, I, 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 I love like her, her questions. Man. I like her questions. She's, she's spot on. She's yeah. to the point. She yes. brings facts and you can yes. tell before her shows, she says she, she lays out the rules before the show, because when the people start interrupting her, she's like, Hey, remember when we talked about, remember yep. when we talked about this? Yeah. She's got great and, control. I, I dig and, it. And, and she went on vice and they tried to destroy her on vice. I don't know if you saw those segments. Nah. I'll, I'll send you the clip. I even put the link in, in the video here, but I'll send you this after it's done. But she went on Vice Media. She was on a panel with a bunch of feminists. And they, I mean, normally they would just tear somebody apart. They were coming after her. She held her yeah. composure better than 
a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Yeah, she's you cool. Could, she's, you could put yeah. her in front of Congress. This chick ain't gonna break. She's not breaking. She's free of breaking. She's nice rap, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah, shouts out. She's to tight. Yeah, big yeah, up, yeah. Big up, exactly. Big up, pearly things. Yes. Um, yeah. All right. So, so go, ahead, while, go ahead. She, So speaking of stats, right? She brought up a stat where she was like, "Well, how women want like okay, a guy that's over six foot, a guy that's making this, a guy that's making that, and it's a very slim percentage of men that fit in all those categories. So mm-hmm. when you're telling me like this guy's six four. He automatically is like in 5% of the male population. So yep. that automatically makes him a, 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 a candidate, right? Yep. The thing that I think is interesting, right, with the incel piece about like not being able to get a woman is, and again, I think this is a culture, this is a conditioning that our validation depends on women. Wow. Why? Like, wow. what is the reason that is like, what, what, like, and I think this is a piece I'm, I'm speaking this cause I lived it right. Like, Hey man, I gotta make sure my body count is up or I gotta, I gotta have this chick or I gotta, you know, show that I can pull a chick when I go out with my friends. Like really? Like, yeah. I'm about- <laughs> so anyway, I think that's a piece that's like, if this dude were like, yo, I just want to go take care of myself for myself. He'd be surprised. Like he probably get in great shape and women would be like coming up to him like more than he could even recognize. He may exactly. not even recognize it for the first couple months. Like women may be like fawning over him. He'd be like, "What's this woman doing? Are you do you need the Heimlich?" Like, what? Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, right. <laughs> exactly. This is what happens though, right? When there's a lack of self awareness, and I know I've been there because, like, you know, I've I've wanted. I, I remember my brothers like they're all good with women, and I felt like I was always the the friend, right? And I always wanted to be something more, and I felt like that. I use that as validation. And that was that really like, for what? Like, and even like for me having like uh, multiple kids, like I was still using a woman as like, okay, I got to have a woman and I got to be in a relationship with a woman to really make sure that I'm a man, someone I could share my life with. But really if, when I, when I recognize like now I'm a free agent, right? Like big up to coach Greg Adams, man, the free agent lifestyle. <laughs> but like, I love that. I love how he explains that because it's like a free agent can do what they want. Right. When I read his book, I really was settling into like a free agent can do what they want and they're focused on their goals. And the thing that's really important, like a lot of the incels may say, well, you know, I, I'm, I've given up on women. And I'm I, like, when I hear that, I'm like, no, you've given up on more than women, man. You've given up on creativity. You've given up on like a piece of your life because it's not the woman. It's the feminine energy you're fucking missing. Yeah. It's not the it. woman, man. I love it. And it's not just yeah. the one. It's related to everything. It's related to everything. everything. I guarantee you, right? If we were to take 10 of these incel dudes, right? And be like, look, man, you know, let's put you on a room. Like how many people are going out and active? How many people like sit in the house most of the day? How many people do this? All of them would be like most likely sitting in the house most of the day, por- uh, porn, addicted to porn. Well, either like either like um, addicted to recreational drugs or like alcohol, have some sort of habit that's like slowly destroying them or like they, they're like, quote unquote, um, what's it not? Not um, what do they call it? Uh, introspective? Right. And the thing is, is that like all those things, like being able to go outside, have communication, have connection be able to get creative, tap into the senses of the body and circulation. Those are really like flow and feminine characteristics. Like, you know, I did, I remember I did a a video on like the body is feminine and I'm like, man, men, like, what if you dated your body? What if you like really courted your body? Like, yo body, I'm gonna buy you some flowers. You know what? Oh, Bobby, body. Why don't we take a bubble bath? Oh yeah. Is that some Epsom salt? Yeah. I'm about to, I'm about to hook you up with some Epsom salt body. Oh yeah, some sea salt too. But like what would we what would happen to us if we really treated our bodies like they were our partner? Like we took care of it. We bought them flowers. We got them a pedicure. We, you know, we took them out on dates and stuff. You know, like bro, that was one of the best things I did was to actually take myself on a date. I just bought myself tickets to go see Seal. I'm going to see him by myself. Wow. I'm like, hey. Wow. Yeah, Seal, sing. <laughs> like, bro, it's and this is the piece where I'm, I'm encouraging more men to live for yourself, man. I love it. Live- you know, here's 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 the thing too about living for yourself, and I love this. I I, I heard this quote, and it and it reaches so truth. So you spend 
so much time with yourself. You need mm. to spend so much time with yourself to be comfortable with yourself before mm. you go out and start dating again. The thing about that is, is once you become comfortable with yourself, being alone and doing things by yourself, you don't want to go out and date. <laughs> You're just like, why do I want to go out? I'm, I'm cool with this. Yeah, okay, yeah, we go out next week. That's fine. You're not, uh, you know, when you talk about the women validation, you're no longer sitting there going, oh, I need to go out Friday night because if I don't go out Friday night, I'm not a man. Yeah, I'm a man. I'm going to go get some wings and watch the football game. And, you know, what happens, happens. Maybe I'll get a dessert. Maybe I'll drink. Maybe I won't, you know, but I'm doing it with me. I'm comfortable with that. You're not sitting around going, oh, man, I'm just so lonely. And bro, Dude, th let me tell you, like, this was a piece. This was a piece for me, like especially over the past several years, like I've been financially, like it was a rough, rough period. Um, like, you know, I had my own businesses, like contract work and, and like for people that are listening, like, you know, the deal, like, you know, contract work, you can make, you make a deal. Yeah. Great. And then you may not get paid for like another month, maybe two months. And then like, once you get paid, then you're paying yourself off stuff that like you're laid on and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like there was a lot of times like I was like, man, this sucks. I have no money. I was like, man, I want to go out. I can't go out. I can't even go on a date because I can't, you know, I mean, I'm in, the, I'm, I'm overdrawn, girl. I can't get you a drink. You going to get me one? You know, and I, and I was like, I can't ask a woman that like, oh God. But like, you know, as I, as I got older and more comfortable with it and just like settled in, like if a woman asked me out, I'd be like, are you paying? Cause like right now, like I have no money. Um, and that's what it is. You can come over. We can have some, we can have some drinks. I'll make you some dinner, man. You know, throw some stuff on the grill, make a fire. But again, like for me, I got to be honest with that, Mike. Right. And I also got to recognize like, well, what is this pull for me? While I don't have my money, I still think I got to go out and pick up chicks, get them a drink. Like, man, what about myself, man? Like, Maybe I want to go get myself some veggies and make a juice, but I'm going to spend my last bit of money on taking this woman out on a date because I think if she gives me some coochie cuckoo, -coo, I'm going to feel better about myself. And really? if you're not aware of that, if you're not aware of that, you're going to go out and do it. You're going to self-sabotage. You're going to be sitting there broke. You're probably not going to get laid anyway. And right. you don't have the juice. And right. And here's the thing, man. Here's the thing, man. Okay. Women are different right now. Women are different, man. This ain't this ain't your mama's Oldsmobile, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like mm -hmm. women. Women are different, bro. They will flim flam and throw you. And listen, this is this is facts. Like, and women can, if we we're listening to this, I bless up to you, women. And like, you know that you're different, okay? You know it because like, there's this thing of like we women are. I think it's it's like they're looking and searching and seeking for something. And now because men are validated by women, they're looking and searching and seeking too. Yes. And what happens is they're off their purpose and then they get some woman or they get some a partner. And all of a sudden, like they don't know what to do with their lives because they freaking never tapped into their purpose. Or when they tried to because they failed to get a proper partner, that partner was dinging you and taking you away from your purpose to make you certain you feel like shit until they find the next person. That's what's happening out here now because like men, like, again, if you look at statistics, I'm, I'm a statistics guy. Cause I'm like a big nerd. Like women are tend tend to make more than men. And then when you take in like men get divorced, like if men, if you, if men go through a divorce, it's financially crippling shit, man. I got two garnishes going through my, um, my check tomorrow, man. My check is getting cut in half, half son, half Mike, half. So no juice, Half. no dates tomorrow, right? <laughs> no dates, bro. I'm going to be eating grilled cheese sandwiches for a week, bro. Grilled cheese ain't bad. balance out. Grilled cheese ain't bad, man. Come on. It now. is good. It's, it's delicious. And plus, like, I, I got Costco. Man, man, listen, I'm good. I listen, I prepare for this stuff, though, because I know it's coming because I've been aware. Yeah. Right? Because, like, I knew it's coming. Like, my thing right now is like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna eat this for three months, but, and I'm going to work towards private agreement. So it's not garnish my check. I have more control over it. These companies like aren't like in my guts about like, you know, like, oh, this dude's got a garnishment. Well, what's his story? You know what I mean? Exactly. But I say this because like, I think this piece is when you said makes an incel a dangerous man. I, 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 when I, when I read that, what I, what I interpreted with that is like the incel is already inside. So if they were really to tap into inside 
they be unstoppable. Yes, exactly. That's what unstoppable, I'm saying. It, bro. It, 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 what I mean by dangerous is kind of like um, like Jordan Peterson when he talks about mm-hmm. you know you need to be um, you need to be a monster, but yeah. you need to learn to control it because if you if you're just naturally nice because you don't know evil, you, you're not really you don't really have any value. You're just no. nice. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, incels, they know the goods. They know the bads. They know how to pick up women. They know about relationships. They know all this. And they could have ultimate control over over the marketplace just by being self-aware of a few things such as go get a fucking haircut. You know what I'm saying? Change your shirt. All right? Brother, you're 6'4". You're in good shape. But... You're wearing 4X large shirts that don't even fit you. Ain't no chick going to look your way. Wear something a little more, you know, and, and I'm not trying to tell a guy how to dress. I'm saying be aware of what that is to be able to say, oh, here's my self-awareness. Uh, a year ago, I weighed 260 pounds. I was what? A, I was a fat fuck. Okay. I went on the dating websites, you know, we all go play around on the dating websites and, and I couldn't get, I couldn't get a swipe. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know what? And, and it wasn't about the dating. It was about myself. I looked at myself. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done with this. I went right. down to 183 pounds, started building back up muscles. Man. Yeah. And, and like I'm 200 pounds now, but it's all muscle. And um, Congrats, I went back man. To, the waiting, <laughs> to the dating sites just to see what was going on. It's all day long, man. It's all day long. So it's like, why wasn't I aware just to be able to say, you know what, dude, you just need to improve a few things about your life. You know, right now your confidence is shattered because, you know, you're coming out of a divorce. You think that, you know, no woman's going to want you. You think that you don't have any worth. You're going to be broke the rest of your life because you're supporting, you know, a family that you only get to see part time. And I'm like, no, you know what? No, I'm not going to have this fucking life. No, there you go. No, I, I, I refuse to do it. So, so. um, it was becoming self-aware of things that I was doing wrong, the self-sabotage, some of the stuff we spoke about off offline that I'm not going to share with the audience right now. But um, What's up? It, yeah, it's some of those things where it's like, this is, this is up to me. This is up to yeah. me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I looked in the divorce, like, who's going to save me? Who's going to help me? Yeah. Are you going to help me? Can you help me get back together with my wife and yeah. can you help make me a better person? And you, know, you realize as a man, no, no one's going to help you as a man. No, no, no offense, but the world Dude. teaches us from an early age, you know, brush it off, rub some dirt on it, um, um, oh. go about your business. And then you go through years of being emasculated and now you're out there and you don't know what the fuck to do. You don't know right. how to rub dirt on it. You don't know how to move on. It's you're just confused. It, 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 Mike, and this is the thing that like I see is really troubling right now, man, for men is – Men, in my judgment, men fail to get taught what it means to be on purpose, right? Because there is a collective box of what a man is supposed to be, right? And one of the things that, and I love what you said about what Jordan Peterson said about um, dangerous, being dangerous. You know, in uh, one of our circles, one of the guys that joins the circle on a regular basis, man, I saw a salutation to each other. Be like, yo, stay dangerous, man. <laughs> stay dangerous. And what does that mean? Like, you know, you're going to punch somebody in the face? No. It just means that you're unpredictable in pursuit of what you're here for. It means you're capable of it. You're capable of it. It means if that man comes up to you and wants to push his way in your business, you are going to knock him the fuck out. It doesn't yeah, mean exactly. that you're going and spouting out your chest and trying to pick fights with people. Yeah, nope, nope. It's a, it means that you're going to handle it. Right. And yeah. I think it's like it's one funny because I was I remember talking to uh, I was talking, I think it was my friend Chris. It was some one of man. I was like, he was like, yo, did you, does anyone ever like test you? I was like, no. He was like, I get it. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, he was like, I know you're a nice guy and everything, but I could I could just tell like if shit went down, like you'd fuck shit up. I was like, oh, OK, well, <laughs> I mean, like, I guess <laughs> but like, yo, because yeah. like, you know, listen, man, like. It's it's far from being a pushover, and I think like uh, a lot of men in our society, uh, especially when it came out with like woke, like the woke and the toxic masculinity, it put a lot of men on their heels. Like so, a lot of the, um, I think I always look at it as like a setup, like you know, it's like some it, like some really raw behavior, 
like, you know, when it became like really civilized and everybody was like in separate houses and the man was the ruler of household rather than being tribal and stuff like this. I think it like got to this thing where all of a sudden like men acted uh, like had just like rough, like unrefined behavior. And now it's all to the other end. Like you did this 17 years ago. So now men are like, oh, shit, I don't want to look at you, man. Like, but then women are going to be like, why don't men want to date? Why, why are men trying to pick you up? Cause if I go say something to you, you're gonna say I'm 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 like trying to harass you, yep. Or like I I I did something like what? So it's the it's whole like, the whole environment is toxic. The whole environment we're, is really we're, toxic, man. We're at a crossroads it's confusing. where yes, yes, thank you, yeah, thank you. Men it's men are scared to do certain things because they don't know how a woman's gonna react. Women yeah. are scared to do certain things because they don't know how men are gonna react. Um, when I came back to the the quote unquote dating world, yeah. It was a fucking nightmare. It was so? a shock. Well, when you talk about how women are different now and men yeah. are different now, it, you know, 20 years ago, you like a woman, you go, you ask her out. She says, yes, both of you are going to sit down. You're going to go out on a date. And if you both like each other, you're going to move forward with something. Try to make things work. Yeah. You're going to call each other, maybe go out on another date. Now, courting. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got the courting and everything else like that. Now... Yep with dating culture. I know we're off topic a little bit, but fuck it. Yeah, we're, rock, we're rocking, bro. I'm loving it's it. My, it's my podcast. Turn it off. Yeah, hell yeah. Mic. Rock so, it, Mike. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, now we're where, you know, if I ask a girl out and she says yes, now mm -hmm. I have to sit back and go, did she say yes too fast? Is she desperate? Mm -hmm. Does she like me? Does she not like me? Oh, I wonder what to wear because she's going to look at my clothes and she's going to judge me based on the shirt I'm wearing or this. Mm. And then the women are going to do the same thing. Well, he mm. didn't text me back fast enough. So maybe he's talking with four or five other women. So mm. I'm going to go ahead and talk to a few other guys and keep them on the side. Um, mm. so, somebody I was talking to recently explained it as, as FOMO, like the fear. Of yeah, missing out. yeah, I can see that. I can get, and, I get that. And, and so it's like, okay, I, I want to go out with this person and I like them and they seem perfect, but I fear that if I make any type of commitment, if things go bad in six months from now, I'm going to have to start over from the beginning. So I may as well try to keep a few things on the side and maybe there's something better. And people are missing out because they don't want to make any type of commitment for, for whatever reason it is. And, and let me tell you like this, the online dating world is, is toxic anyway, because it's, it's full of a, the majority of the people are still broken likely wanting to use relationships. And when I first got back into it, like a year ago, when I went on the apps just to see what, you know, kind of fishing around, yeah. uh, I thought, hell, I'll get another woman. It'll help me heal. Right. Oh, no. I mean, you don't need to be completely healed to be back in a relationship, but um, some of the time people are like, oh, I want to get in a relationship because I'm going to feel better, you know, based on their attachment style. They, they have that need to have that, that codependency type. Thing. And um, and I can speak on codependency. Codependency fucked me up. That was also, one of the mean? things that really helped emasculate me because, um, mm. you know, during the marriage, I started relying on um, my validation was her telling me, you know, I did a good job here and um, telling me, hey, I really like how you do this. And it, it became so um, normal for me that if I didn't get that, I yeah. felt like, oh my God, I need to have that. So I would yeah, try I to do more somewhere? or try to prove more. And then it, and then it became like, well, you're doing that because you're a narcissist because you just want um, attention and compliments all the time. Yeah. And that fucked me up in my mind. Cause I'm thinking, what, what, what am I, am I a nurse? What, what's going on? Well, you know, hindsight, yeah. I look back and it's like, no, it was codependency. I'm sitting here relying on somebody else to tell me I'm doing good instead of being self-aware and knowing, hey, I did a good job. I don't need anybody to tell me I, I'm fine. But I became so uh, dependent on getting that, that um, gratification or that, um, that, that um, verification of something I did was good. Yeah. It just became ahead of it. So it, it absolutely tore me up. And then when the divorce came, no one was here to tell me I did a good job. Yeah. Just me and my thoughts telling me, hey, you fucked up because you lost your family. So, mm. you know, we want to talk about, you know, depression and anxiety and how we talked about, you know, unliving in the beginning of this um, podcast. That's where a lot of men's thoughts go. That's when the yeah, intrusive man. thoughts come in because you don't have that anymore. So um, yeah. you need to be aware if you're, co if you're codependent at all, gentlemen, <laughs> get some help because yeah, it, it, yeah, man. it can ruin you. But it, yeah. it really and, and man, dude. Oh man, first of all, thank you for sharing that, man. Um 
because I I, re- I resonate with what you're saying deeply. Because uh, that was, listen, man, when I when I made the choice to leave, man, that was one of the hardest choices I've ever made, and probably will ever make in my life. Um, because it, it, I knew that if I didn't leave, I was going to end up killing myself or her. I knew I had to. And, and it was like, when I left the same voices that I heard you say, you were saying to yourself are the same ones I said, like, man, you are a piece of shit. I was saying, I was a piece of shit. You did, you did what your father did. You know better than your father, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Oh man, I am a piece of crap. And that showed man, like that showed in how I was treating myself. Um, like I was struggling at that time and I, I'm, I'm really, the codependency thing is like, man, this like, this brings up so much for me because I recognize that that was also a wound, man. Like I was talking, so it's funny. I was talking to my brother about this. Hundred percent. Thank you. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, so, um, so I, so for example, so, um, black guy, um, I was, my first wife was white. And my one of my older brothers, I was talking to. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Yeah, 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 man. Listen, yeah. <laughs> my, thank mine you. was Egyptian, so you know. Every, <laughs> oh, I, I, hear, I, I hear these passport bros going around, and they're like, "We're going." I'm like, Bro. "Skip Egypt." <laughs> yeah, they all the same, right, man. They all the same. Go right to hey, Egypt. By the way, real quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, brother. They're all listen. You know, yeah, I know. Universal. How long were you married? And do you have kids? I just want curious. Yeah, two kids. Um, fifteen and nine. One's almost sixteen. Um, and, and just, just to say that, it, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to bring it down on Egyptian culture. It, it has a lot to do with, um, Western culture. I don't care where you're from, you know, Western culture seems to be kind of up on its, its head right now. And, yeah. and I just want to point out, I, I, I will never speak ill of my ex-wife Bless and, um, and here's why I, I tell everybody that breakups are relative. All right. So if you're listening right now and your wife left you, you're, you're probably thinking that you're in the right. Well, I'm here to tell you that she has reasons for leaving you and she is 100% right. Okay. But let me tell you this, your feelings that she shouldn't have left you. They're not wrong. Thank She's you. right, but you're not wrong. Right. All right. It's relative to that person. So I, I can't sit here and say, Oh, you know what? My wife should have did this. My wife should have did this. I, I have to be aware of my faults and take ownership for, for everything I fucked up. Yeah. So, uh, and, but yeah, back, back, back to the, the, the Western culture and everything else like that. So your first wife. Well, was yeah, white. the first one. And like, and, and I'm going to come back to this, but like you said something too, like the should, the shoulds, right? Like what it should be. And I remember one of my coaches was like, he was big on words. He was like, should is shaming. Absolutely. hundred percent. hundred percent. Cause I was like, damn, I see that stuff all the time. But like, so, okay. So coming back to like this, so my brother, like the wound piece, codependency, so talking to my brother about like, you know, my, uh, my first wife was white and like his, his wife was white. He only been, he's only been married once. And we were both talking. It was like, I was like, so what was it about her that she married? He was like, you know, Paul, I think it was more the stability that I thought that family had. And I was like, brother, I feel you. Cause when I look back on it, especially with self-awareness, I was like, what was it that I really loved about my former wife? Like, yeah, I'm sure there was stuff like I loved about her, but like really I, what I really loved was like the stability I thought her family had mm-hmm. because my family, again, like if you read, read, the, read the book, like my, I was chaos in my house. Like, you know, her dad seemed like a cool dude. We go out golfing. He wasn't like, you know, we'd have our drinks and stuff, but it wasn't like he was beating his wife and shit. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, even though I was young, like that's the stuff that was going on. So I recognize, man, like, you know, by us wanting to be in a stable relationship, we chose partners that we thought were stable. In reality, that was, again, leading from a wound, man, because like her family was far from stable. Our family, actually, I, I perceive as well, actually just as stable, <laughs> if not more so. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? Like, exactly. we had different things, you know? Well, and the thing yeah. was, is like, again, it was a codependency thing because like I was, I, I had to be dependent on her thinking like, well, if I can't be with her who's stable, what am I? I got to figure this out. 
Because you're a man, you have to figure it out. It's your job as a man. It's your job as a man to figure it out. You you have to you have to fix it. You have to solve it. No one's going to help you, but you have to solve it. It's your even if it isn't your problem, it's still your problem. And and that's peace, Mike. That's what sucks right now about uh, about a lot of men too, is because we live in that. You know, something was fucked up. Even though it may not have been our fault, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But it's still our job to fix it. And we can't fix it because she left. She's gone. She's living her life now. And now I'm here by myself. What do I do? And, and that's where a lot of men are broken because you just sit there and go, okay, what now? I, I don't have anything to fix. Right. I don't have anything to do what, what I am what I was brought up to do, brought up to be. I, I, I'm not that person anymore. Right. So It's wild, right? Because like this brings up something I was like, I was like really, it was on my head so big. Um, uh, about like the, the vibe that I was catching from you, what you were saying, right. It's like, um, like, okay, I, I, I left this relationship. I needed something like, will it validate me? First of all, that space of like wanting to get back in something is a very dangerous place because that's when a lot of the big mistakes can happen. And I'm speaking from experience. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I like doing this work and work with men, especially when they're going through transition because that transition is pivotal because that is the fertile ground for poor choices. Okay. Fertile ground for poor choices. So that's where it's like, okay, I need to really settle down and really look at like, well, wow, what is going on with me? And it's something that like I was, I was driving through the woods and I was thinking about my life as I've gotten older. Like when I was in my twenties, I was always chasing even into my thirties. Like I felt like I got to catch up and you said something. I'm, I'm trying to remember recall what you said specifically, but it's basically that type of vibe. Like I got to catch up. I got to catch, catch, catch. Then I'm recognizing now it's like, as I'm like, you know, in my forties, when I first turned 40, like I recognize like I could walk. I have to chase things. I could walk with things. I could be things. Now, like I'm approaching 50. Now I get to realize like, man, I could stroll. Then I could stand. Then I could just be, and like, and why? What the? Why I say this because like that running thing is like I think in our in our emotional and mental maturity as men, majority of our life is spent running and chasing things. Then like when we realize self, then we're like, yo, I could, I could, I can walk, and I'm still gonna get there, right? Like I'm me running is tiring me out, my joints are hurting and shit. Then it comes to a point where it's like, yo, man, I could stroll there, man, because I I'm pulling that to me. Now it's like I could stand there because like I got the space and wherewithal that like I'm pulling whatever I want in and then I could sit with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's a exactly. gradual stage of man, right? And it's a gradual stage of our mental capacity and our mental belief system. And think about this from like the, 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 the you know, relationship is like what a most guy will use to validate or even career people in the beginning of our, our career, right? of my career. I was like chasing. I was like, I got to get up to the ladder. I got to get up to the ladder. Then, you know, then you find like, you know, your niche and then like people know you're good. Then all of a sudden like, yo, you're just walking around like, yo, my stuff is good. Then like you really get how good your stuff is. And then like people are hiring you for speeches and you just like stroll. Then all of a sudden, man, you write a book or something or like, you know, Hey, people are like people come to you. Cause all you gotta do is sit there and you're making cake. Right. Exactly. It's the gradual progression that we go through in all different parts of life. So the thing is, I challenge men with like, what stage am I? What stage am I in right now? Am I running? Am I walking? Am I strolling? Am I standing here? Am I able to be with this? I don't know. It's nothing right or wrong. It's just what it is. Hundred percent, man. Hundred yeah. percent. I love um, in in one of the courses I teach, talking about getting back into relationships. Um, Attachment styles are so important. Tell me, I, re- I gotta um, tell, uh, talk yeah. to me about that because I'm like, I'm like new to that piece. Uh, brother, you need to do some research, but I, I'll kind of go Word. over it. So, basically, Done. attachment styles are who we attract or who we're attracted to based on various wounds or trauma that we received as um, as kids. Mm-hmm. You know, so for me, um. I had an avoidant attachment style when I first got married. You know, I, I wasn't about to get married. I was 27. I was living a good life. Um, I had dated a few women who cheated on me, you know, so I was like, you know, I'm not really, 
I'm not really getting married because I don't want to get married and give half my shit away to a woman that's going to eventually cheat on me or whatever, you know? So I had an avoidant attachment style. I just didn't want to commit into a relationship. Right. Um, I met my wife at the time and I hate to admit it because, you know, I hate her now. No, I don't hate her. But, uh, <laughs> um, You're like, just I, a little. I, I, I'm telling you, <laughs> for a man that was, was, he was, I was living, I was living my life, man. I'm 27 yeah. or 26 at the time when we met. I was living my life. When I first met this woman, it was over. It was over. I, I was, we're married. This is my life. Now, so it was like head over heels when you saw her. Like, ooh. It was a head over heels. It was, she took a fucking bat to my head. You know what I mean? Wow. And, and this is for a man. And, and, you know, I'm not bragging. In my 20s, you know, I was a cop at the time. So I wore uniforms. So you, you were know, doing well, bro. I, I mean, I you was, doing, okay. I, I yeah. was decent looking. I was in shape. I had the uniform. And um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yo, man, hold up. Mike, own that piece. Be like, yo, I'm, I'm, I was, I'm handsome. I was, I was rocking it. I, I was the man. So yeah, anyways. thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> so, for a woman to come up during that time and, and yeah. take me away from what a man right now would be like, oh man, that would, that was like the best life, best life you could live. You know, for a woman to take me out of that, it was something. So, right. but through the course of the relationship, I built an anxious attachment style, which means I had like a fear of abandonment. You know, I just, I, I was scared she was going to leave me. So it was always bothering her. Like, uh, uh, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? How about now? Do you still love me now? Did I make you mad? Did I make you mad? And initially when yeah. we got together, she had an uh, anxious attachment style and I had an avoidant attachment style. Then through the years, as she became more of the independent woman. She be started to develop a, an avoidant attachment style. I got an anxious attachment style. So the attractionness went like completely upside down. So, yeah. you know, wow. during the divorce, um, I absolutely, and last, last couple of years, it was like, I, I did feel something was wrong and, and I would try because I, I just, I felt like she's going to leave me, man. I just feel like she's going to leave me, yeah. but I didn't have control or an understanding of what attachment styles were. And I didn't know that, okay, stop asking her if she loves you every single second she's here. Right. So there's something keeping her here from now right. for, for now, at least. So what are you doing? That's pushing her away. And that's mm. what I needed to be self-aware of and say, okay, you know, what's bothering her is me uh, uh, just bugging her all the fucking time. Where are you going? Who are you with? Who are you doing this? And, 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 and it's not like it was controlling, but she right. felt from her end that it was controlling. Like, oh, I can't talk to my friends. No, I'm just wondering, are you going out with your friends? I couldn't communicate to her that, Hey, you know what? I have a fear. You're going to leave me. Uh, in my yeah. mind right now are intrusive thoughts that you're going to go out with a friend of yours, go to a bar and hook up with some guy, have sex with them while I'm sitting here at the kids. I couldn't communicate that with her. So what happened? Right. I got, I stayed home. I stayed anxious. I stayed depressed. And then when she come home, I asked her about it. She would feel tension. I would feel tension and it'd be a big fucking fight. Yeah. Attachment style. I, I, I'm going to have episodes all on attachment styles, but, and we could talk for them for days, but I'm telling you, men, if you don't understand what you're, attachment style is you don't understand what your partner's attachment style is mm. uh, you're going to be in a, in, in a bad boat if you're currently married right now you need to know your partner's attachment style for instance if, if yeah. you have a woman who is constantly seeking validation she has an anxious attachment style she needs that validation give her the fucking validation because if you don't she still needs that validation She's going to get it from Facebook. She's going to get it from Instagram. She's going to get it from male friends. She's going to get it from somebody who she's eventually going to be fucking after she divorces you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you need to recognize that now and say, you know what? I'm a man. I don't need to tell her she looks good every day. Yeah. The fuck you do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You already told her she looks good in that dress, but you need to remind her three, four more times tonight yeah. as you take yeah. her out, as you're going up, as you're continuously courting her. So Yep. You, you've got to know those various attachment styles and, and for too many, like we talk about getting back into relationships, yeah. there's so many anxious attachment styles out there on the dating apps because mm. people have that fear of abandonment and they need that, that I need that partner in order to feel like I'm validated. Like the woman needs to be in a relationship to feel like she's a woman. The man needs to be in a relationship to feel like he's a man. And what happens is you're going to get a lot of these people that come in, they hook up, 
they break up. And then all of a sudden the men are like, yep, I was right about women. The women are like, yep, I was right about men. And it fucks it up for the rest of us. So cycle, cycle, cycle. Uh, so, you know what, you, Paul, I'm going to talk to you here after the podcast. Yeah. I hate to cut this short, but um, just for the podcast purposes, is there sure. anything else you could tell these people listening about self-awareness? Any uh, pieces of advice you want to give them? Something that can wake them the fuck up to understand how important it is. I mean, we could sit here and tell our sad stories all day. But what yeah. can you give them to, to help them understand how important it is to be self-aware? Hmm. Thank you for that. Wow. Um, What I want to relate to men in regards to the importance of self-awareness is that there are parts of you, you have no idea you have access to. There are parts of you that you have misjudged. There are parts of you that have been created by perception. And as soon as a man can recognize those pieces and where he is in his space, in his life, in his relationship, in his body, in his mind, in his spirit, everything is possible. Everything is possible for you because it will shift your perceptions. It will shift your whole constitution. The thing again is it's about courageousness because you're going to have to step outside of something you have no, I, you have yet to know. And there's a willingness to it because knowing that you're going to step into something that's uncertain, you got to be willing to be uncomfortable and uncertain. And Again, those two pieces, those will get you in a lot of doors and a lot of paths of fulfillment. (laughs) No, I love that, man. Hey, I thank you again for being on here. Uh, The book, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, it's real. It's real. I'm not going to endorse something that I don't like. Um, Thank you, bro. And it is a pocketbook. I'm going to keep it handy. So um, everything that we discussed, you can find the links down in the comments um, on YouTube. If you're listening to this on Apple or Google Play, um, simply go to the website, Men Break, to look up the uh, article I have on self-awareness. You're going to see both of our ugly faces on there. Uh, uh, you- you're a pretty handsome man, man. I, I, I like what you got going on. So, Spot that you uh, got it, bro. Spot that you got it, bro. And, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm just saying, give a compliment where it's due, right? <laughs> so um, it will have links to everything. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to get a copy of the book, all the organizations you were talking about, Charlemagne. Um, yeah. There's some an article I shared with you earlier from um, Psychology Today on self-awareness to get people uh, going on that path. Great article. Um, it's just so important, man. So I appreciate you coming on today. Uh, thank you for having me, Mike, man. This was tip top. Looking forward right, to having more combos like this, man. Love it, man. Take it easy. Peace.